Um, also, I did tweak my suspension a bit, so it is a lot to do with my suspension as well. But look at the move right around the outside of the third, the third to last corner. We get the inside for the penultimate corner. That was absolutely sensational. <laughs> We've reversed the top eight from yesterday's race to set the grid for the sprint race here today. And the drivers are almost ready on the grid down below. As we await the start of another hugely anticipated Formula 2 race, I'm joined again by Davide Valsecchi. Davide, as a former GP2 champion, can we get some insight to what is running through these young drivers' heads as they sit out on the grid? Ciao, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. There are nervy moments. There is no doubts about that. Mental strength is the key to remaining calm and focusing on the upcoming race. Formula 2 is so competitive and all of these drivers know that they are going to be pushing each other all of the way. In these sports, you have to be able to control your nerves. Hello guys, it's Hello Turbo 51 over here. Hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. Guys, if you haven't watched the previous episode, which literally t tells you what is going to do, what, or how this episode is going to start off, yesterday's feature race, please go check it out before you check this one because they, I think if you've made it to this far, you'll have already seen a lot of spoilers. But trust me, fantastic race. You don't want to miss it. We are now back the very next day for the sprint race and it is now time to go to war like we did yesterday in the feature race but guys we are starting from p8 so obviously you can realize by now hashtag spoiler alert we won the the, the feature race but literally everything was trying to work against us so the fact that we won was a miracle in its own but for the final time this weekend in vietnam five red lights in it's go 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 for the sprint race no pit stops just to run all the way to the end on the medium tires what well, a little bit of much better launch we had in the in the in the feature race into the first corner you guys can see there i need to go up the inside of schwartzman and markelov you've got aiken there going side by side with dan tickton for p2 lungard and markelov right ahead of us are, are squabbling over p5 we make it for schwartzman we are now up into p7 oh will we go up the inside of lungard there i don't think we will but pedro pk leads the way from dan tickton in p2 jack aiken is in p3 with um christian uh marcus armstrong in p4 arte markelov p5 then you guys can see i actually got past these guys but now it's three why did he get to the next corner? I think this is turn five. Very hectic between myself, Schwartzman, and I'm actually, uh, yeah, that is Christian Lungard there. Um, that was insane, guys. Look at this again. Replay. Look, I get past Schwartzman, <clears throat> and from this point on, I try and go up the inside of Lungard and Markelov. Now, I, could, I already saw Markelov was, was going to squeeze, squeeze me into the wall there. I get past uh, Lungard, and now I get a terrible exit coming out of that. I wouldn't know what, what do you call that? Half a roundabout, and now I'm under pressure from Lungard, Schwartzman, and I, who's behind them? There is that Callum Eilot. I think it is. That's Callum Eilot for, for Univirtuosi. Oh, no, no, that's Luca Giotto. That was Luca Giotto in the high tech. But luckily, we are able to, to what do you call that? Def attack and then defend <laughs> from from Lungard and um, and Schwartzman. And now we chase after Artem Markolov. So we are now up into P6. So myself and Markolov had a fantastic, has had, has have, has had, has had a fantastic start, whatever that, 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 that sentence construction would need it to be. And now you guys can see right behind me, it's actually Lungard and and Schwartzman fighting very furiously over P7. Remember guys, sprint race, only the top eight get points and it's a lot less than in the, the, um, the feature race. For instance, first place in the feature race is 25 points and the sprint race is only 15 points. Um, so I think it's, I, I don't know the points exactly, but you guys will see at the end of the race. We go a little bit later to the brakes into um, the, the, that right-hander before we head into the SS. I was, uh, I was about 20 meters too late into the brakes, so I went a little bit wide. 
Didn't lose too much time. We are still right behind Artem Markolov. Will we do exactly the same tune that we did to him um, in the, the um, feature race yesterday? We go right up the inside at the final corner. Yes, we do exactly what we did to him in the feature race. And that is, once again, we catch Artem Markolov napping. And that is us now up into P5, chasing after Marcus Armstrong. The, the Ferrari Junior driver right behind the Mercedes Junior driver of Jack Aitken who is on the podium. Then you guys can see it. this is now actually a Christian Lungard going for a move on Robert Schwartzman. Right, Schwartzman actually, I don't know why he opted for the outside there. That was a really awkward line heading towards this hairpin. But now you've got the number 6 ART versus the number 21 Prima Racing Machine. The, the, exactly the same car, just different uh, vinyls and different team names. Right around the outside of Schwartzman goes Lungard. Will he get up the inside Schwartzman is really fighting this but nothing he can do against that black and white ART and that is Lungard up into P7 yes P7 now you guys can see I am right behind uh, Christian Lungard's teammate Marcus Armstrong now we are going to go right up to the gearbox of Armstrong he jolts to the outside leaving me to the inside but as you guys can see he, 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 he was very indecisive there he couldn't decide if he was going to go to the to the inside or the outside so he just took the middle of the track so I went back to the outside to get a little bit of a switch back into T2 and that is Asna up into P4. The overtakes are, are flying and they are very intense here in Vietnam. We are now up into P4 but now we've got um, Armstrong and, and Markolov right up behind us trying to get the, to get me back. Here comes Armstrong. He has the inside for this next corner. I'm going to give him the space. He mounts the curve but can't get the power down and we've got the inside for the, for the second part of the chicane as we head into the roundabout. And that is us now up into P4. We now jump on board just at the end of that straight with Jack Aitken. As he is actually fighting for P2 with Dan Tictum. And got Tictum at this stage was really starting to, to lose... Um, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was starting to lose touch with, with PK. But look at the entry again coming out of the hairpin. We absolutely, absolutely trumped Aitken. Will we go around the outside of Tictum? We are side by side into this corner. Beautiful move there around the outside. We, we mount the curve again. Oh, there's oversteer. And again, we have two moments of oversteer there. And Tictum gets back into P2. But why was Tictum and Aitken so slow through the hairpin? I mean, guys, look. Uh, uh, even onto the brakes, they were immensely slow. I nearly ran into the back of Aitken and through the corner they just can't get the power down. M myself on the other hand I can and I just blitz them coming out of the corner. Takes him, he doesn't know what has happened. He, he actually forces me around the outer and there goes going to see over the curve I get oversteer and as I put the power down again in third gear the car snaps on me again. It snaps to the right hand side first and the second time it snapped to the left. So I had to get off the power. I get the moves out on Aitken, but uh, it would have been a sweet double move, move if I could have gotten ticked him. Um, but with all this squabbling going on, guys, Pedro Pique in the Charus is uh, really flying in the lead. Like, he is, uh, I think he's gone. He is absolutely gone. You guys see, I go for a very risky move up the inside of Tictum around at the roundabout, but I'm a little bit too, too, um, too, uh, what's the word, too, too um, eager on the power. And now, instead of attacking, I find myself defending from Aitken and Armstrong. Aitken has already gotten the move done on myself, but now I'm going to try and go for the late breaking move. Armstrong moves to the outside. I need, I'm now forced to go to the inside. Aitken goes to the inside, so I'm sandwiched between the campus and the ART. Later to the brakes, trying to get the switch back done. We have to mount the curb. It's 3 1 in the air for a second as Armstrong nearly spins me there. That would have taken me directly to the wall, side by side with Aitken. My, my attacking move on to have turned into massive defense but luckily we maintain p3 and now armstrong the opportunistic young man that he is is trying to make a move on aitken because i squeezed aitken out at the at the little right-handed corner where i went wide on the first lap but aitken is keeping his nose in there and all the time guys look behind markolov lungard schwartzman all these guys are trying to get into the points well into the higher points like myself because now i'm the championship leader i need to defend my lead i mean you need to race as hard as you can Finally, we managed to catch up to Tictum as we head into the roundabout. I'm basically pushing Tictum through there. You guys can see I've got a little bit of a shark bite out of my front nose. No front wing damage, so I, I didn't even realize that until I saw the replays. Up the inside. Ah, yeah, yeah. Tictum really ran into the wall there. But up the inside of Tictum. But I believe he is going to have DRS now. I didn't think this moved through. But here we go. The drag race to the DRS line. Who's got DRS? Yes, it is Tictum. I fall into his slipstream to try and get the most amount of speed as we head towards the hairpin corner. But I am going to break late 
Kanta once again going to the inside. Tick does not know where to defend. I'm a little bit late into the breaks. I actually run very, very wide and I give Tick the number two car. I give him back P2. It's actually very ironic that the number two car is in P2 at this stage. But once again, Tick defends beautifully because I'm too eager. Well, I'm not eager enough on my breaks. I break way too late. And now, once again, we find ourselves behind the damage car. But while we keep fighting, all the guys behind us who we just had a gap on are catching up. Aitken is already almost back within a second. Um, and you guys can see Pedro PK. He's gone. Pedro is 5.8 seconds ahead of Tictum. No, no, 5.8 seconds ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, up the inside of Tictum. I catch him napping just like Markov. He tries to go for the switchback, but can't get the power down. And we are in P2. And right there, Pedro PK sits the fastest lap of the race. And now... I know it's still, we've still got, what's that, uh, 16 laps to go, but to catch six seconds, it's going to be a job, because remember, the, we don't have pit stops in this race, I need to make sure my tyres last to the end, and, but also I know that PK is going to do that as well. So I'm just going to keep my pace, um, I didn't feel that I was too hard on my tyres, so I'm going to keep my pace and see if I can actually reel in Pedro PK. Um, because I think that is going to be a very, very juicy fight for the win of this of this sprint race. Here we go. A mark it off right around the outside of Tictum, guys. Tictum is clearly struggling a lot because he's already lost the position to Aitken and to Armstrong. And now he's down another position. There must be something wrong with Tictum's dams car because Tictum is really struggling. We are to the next lap. And now Christian Lungard is going to do exactly the same what Markov did to him. Right around the outside, he's really struggling for straight line speed, guys. I think he might have maybe a something wrong with the engine i don't know Ooh, a little bit of a lock up there from lungard but he still gets the car stopped in time and the man in p8 who basically now has reverse grid pole but then no, 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 he's there because of racing it's gonna it's gonna punch jack Aitker. oh jack Aitker. dead ticked him in the teeth and he's down to p8 take them was just a few moments ago racing for p2 is now all the way down to p8 and um, oh, there's a little bit of a slow car there. What is happening here with Christian Lungard? Something is wrong with that car. He once again, the, so guys, sometimes the, 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 the AI just can't get the power down through that hairpin. I don't know why. Um, but he actually defends from Schwartzman. But now it's going to be under massive pressure from Schwartzman. And I, I think Aitken is just like, guys, please pull me along. Please pull me along. Now you guys can see a few, well, uh, 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 quite a few laps later, we have actually catched, caught up to the back of Petro PK. And what a beautiful move up the inside of PK! Look at that! That is us open to P1. I didn't even expect that. I didn't think that was coming. But we have caught up to the back of PK. But, oh, okay, he's got DRS. Um, so we are now the one. We have gone from the hunter to the, to the hunted. Right around the outside goes Pedro PK and takes back the lead um, of this. Oh, sprint race. I'm, I'm going up the inside of PK. I'm not just letting this go. This is for the win, guys. If I get the win, yeah, I would have literally had a perfect weekend. Like a swan song weekend. Poland qualifying, win the feature race, and win the sprint race. It's basically the perfect weekend with the maximum amount of points except for fast slap. Um, I, at this stage, I do have fastest laps. Now you guys can see PK is ahead. I will have DRS as we head into the hairpin. DRS is open. And now, PK, well, I am now once again the hunter. You will be the hunted. Please remember where the brakes are, Turbo. We go. PK leaves us the outside. He defends the inside. He actually, wow, I wanted to go for the stretch back there, but PK parked his car right on the apex there. Beautiful defensive work there from Pedro PK. We've still got half the race to go, guys. So I actually caught PK fairly quick. I thought it was going to be like lap 16 or whatever. But um, here we go. PK defends actually very harshly on the home straight. Well, on the pitch straight. Ooh, the, okay. Turbo, do you know what brakes are? Because clearly you don't. Guys, I was so into the brakes, but in my defense, I couldn't see my racing line very well there. And yes, I do rely too much on my racing line, but I was, I'm, I'm, I need to focus on my opponent as well as not to, you know, end my own race. So um, I think that mistake is a little bit valid because I was completely on the inside of the track. And um, the guys, that is the reason why I wanted to run with a 2D race line because if that thing was 3D, I would have been able to see it a lot easier on the on the track and I would have broke at the right time and I would have made an easy move on PK. This just gives so much more juice to the race. You see, once again, on the main straight, here we go, Pedro PK. He actually, I can't, can't catch him napping there. I'm up the inside. We have the lead now. But again, he's going to have DRS on this next straight. And you guys can see, he is not slow. I'm just able to match him and when the, uh, when the 
opportunity arises, I am able to, to attack him. But now, once again, he's got DRS. Oh, there's nothing I can do. He's quicker and he's got less downforce on his car. Park Ferme rules are still um, um, active in the sprint press. You can't change your tune, tune setup. After, as soon as you say drive out for quali, that is the way your car is tuned. The only thing you can change is your differential and your front wing, as far as I know. But we go up the inside of uh, Pedro Pique there. And he what at the roundabout. But now again, I'm not thinking my moves through completely because one thing, and he's going to have DRS and slipstream on this never ending back straight. And he's even passed me before we get to DRS. So what am I supposed to do? He's gone. I mean, better PK there. Two tenths already. So there's no point in going for a dive bomb here. I'm just going to break nice and early. I've tried on settling him through the corner, but PK is not phased at all. You guys can see the tires, however, are really starting to go off. I've got 47% already on the right front, and it's only lap 14. So you guys can see that I have been pushing hard, but I'm, it's not that I'm losing pace. I'm actually matching pace as I have a big tag slapper there heading into the S section. You guys can see in the S's, I've just got so much more confidence in the, than the AI thanks to my higher downforce. Um, also, I did tweak my suspension a bit, so it is a lot to do with my suspension as well. But look at the move right around the outside of the third, the third to last corner. We get the inside for the penultimate corner. That was absolutely sensational. I think I wish I could hear Davide Valsecki commentate this race because Davide will absolutely lose his mind. And guys, you, you can at me as much as you want. Davide Valsecki is the best racing commentator that has ever lived. <laughs> he is fantastic. We get up the inside of Pedro PK. Once again, we are now going to be under pressure from PK through this next part because he will have DRS. But we've got a, a much more solid lead now. Oh! oh my goodness. Oh, come on, Turbo. Why? I had the lead. All I had to do was defend on the straight and I would have, I would have been A for away. Oh, you guys can see how hard I'm pushing because I, I, I'm, I'm overdriving. Because, uh, not overdriving in the good sense. I'm not overdriving and outperforming the car. I'm overdriving and making stupid mistakes. I should have had the lead now three, four laps ago, but every time I hesitate that, oh, PK has a very weird lockup heading into that corner. I am forced to go up the inside to avoid running into him, and that forces me over the outside curb, and once again, with a switchback, PK, it, it, clearly he's got some of his father's talent, because P Petro PK is absolutely giving me the race of my life. I thought Dragovic gave me that race last, uh, last round and the sprint race with me and Dragovic fought for the win on the final lap, hashtag spoiler alert, sorry, but um, I should have called spoiler alert before I gave the spoiler, I'm not really good with this, so yeah, sorry, if you haven't watched the previous um, uh, round um, in Bahrain, uh, yeah, yeah, I basically gave it a bit of away there, but still, fantastic episode, still go watch them if you haven't watched them yet, we once again, guys, I can see, the Pedro is uh, he's actually catfishing me so much, he makes sure that he's slow in the sections where I'm fast in the corners, but he also makes sure that he's right up my gearbox as soon as there's a DRA zone, so there's nothing I can do to defend against him on the straight, yet, we actually are very very good onto the brakes into the the, the um I keep what is want to say happen into the roundabout section but once again look how sly and good PK is he's right behind me and there's nothing I can do about him literally there's nothing I can do about him he's right behind me he's got slipstream he's gonna have DRS now and here he goes right around the outside and there's no point in squeezing him to the wall because I'm just gonna get a penalty so PK is around my outside and you guys know I'm not a dirty driver but Pedro PK is literally giving me the race of my life. I think the last time I had a battle like this was against Alexander Albon um, on F1 2019 for the Spanish sprint race. Oh, I tried to go for that outside move again, but it's, a, it's at this stage of the race now where the tires are just saying, no bueno, not happening, not happening. We've got five laps to go. We start lap 18 right now, and now it is time, guys, I need to get a move done because look behind us. We had about a seven to eight second gap from um, to, to third place, which is now Marcus Armstrong. It was Jack Aitken. Oh, a little bit of a bumping and bodging there between myself and PK. Up the inside again. Once again, PK is catfishing me. You guys can see that I actually went over the DRS detection line. Second, will this finally be the move to get me into the lead? Well, look at PK! Around the outside, I've got DRS. He does not. And yet, look what the, 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 the difference in downforce has made. We've got the speed now. We're going to go a little to the brakes, up the inside. We'll talk about the guys behind us again. Look at that. PK actually, oh beautiful straight back, look at that, 
beautiful switchback. We get Pedro PK. If he if he re overtakes me again, I'm gonna cry. We have been battling now for what eight nine laps. I caught him on what on lap eleven or lap ten. We've been fighting for eight laps, like non-stop eight laps, fighting every single lap. Look at this. Here he comes. What am I supposed to do? And now Armstrong is right behind us as well. That's what I was busy saying. Guys. Me and PK fought so much. The 7 to 8 second gap we had, I think it was that. Otherwise, it was like 5, 6 seconds. We lost that because we couldn't stop fighting. We got up the inside of PK at the end. But, but once again, that Charus is straight line speed, guys. PK must be running massive, a uh, massively amount. Uh, no, a massive amount of less down. No, my English is terrible. A huge amount of downforce less than myself. Thank you. Sorry for my terrible English. But finally, finally, into the third sector on lap 18, I get the move done on Pedro PK. But guys, I have to say, when I saw this, Marcus Armstrong overtaking Pedro PK for P2, I was actually sad because after the absolutely sensational battle I had with Pedro PK, he deserved this win. I think myself and PK deserved this win equally, but he, if, if I had to win, which I'm going to do now, he deserves P2 more than any other driver on this grid. He drove phenomenally as I have a little bit of a rub there with the wall. But Pedro PK, this has been the most fun I think I've had in such a long time, battling with a driver, lap by lap by lap. Guys, eight, so basically, let's, 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 let's run it out. Let's make it nine laps of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, battling, and an AI actually outsmarting me throughout that time. I literally, I only, um, I didn't even outsmart him when I made the move. I just placed my car at the right place at the right time, even though he was the hunter and I was the hunted. I defended my, when I finally overtook him, I think the added pressure of Armstrong also threw PK a bit, but GG's PK. I'm going to get driver of the day, but he deserves driver of the day without a shadow of a doubt. That was absolutely Phenomenal. Come on, PK, get back P2 from Armstrong. Please get back P2 from Armstrong. You deserve P2, my man. This Brazilian has given me the race of my life. And he was actually, on this final lap, Armstrong was busy catching me again. So he was trying to push to, to put me under pressure to win. But I luckily, I, I, I had about two seconds in my pocket. And on the final lap, I, with my tires, absolutely, I'm, I mean, puncture territory. I was just cruising, not putting extra um, unnecessary pressure on the tires, not making stupid, crazy mistakes, just nursing the car home. And what a race it's been. It's been a perfect weekend. We've been the driver of the weekend, but for this specific race, I want to give it to Pedro PK. GG's Pedro, GG's, well, GR, great race. GG's good game, but that was fantastic. My right front is screaming at me at 73%. It is Punja territory, but we round the penultimate corner for the final time. And guys, what a weekend of drama here in Vietnam. But finally we are done. We take full honors here in Vietnam. Absolutely fantastic. It's a brilliant result. Well done. Question. That was a critical win. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? The difference was in the strategy. Credit to the driver for sure. But races like this really drive home how much of a team sport this is. They did a lot of work on the pit wall to really make the most of each stint and to make the best use of the tires. But that said, all of that would have been for nothing without a talented hand on the wheel. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations and it's going to be MP Motorsport picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? Lots of drivers impressed me today, Alex. But if I have to say one that impressed me most, it's Nobuaru Matsushita. And after all that excitement, I think it's time for a lie down. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you when Formula 2 returns.
For the first time ever, I think I disagree with Davide Vasecki. Guys, Pedro Pique was driver of the day. He had, he built a fantastic lead, a gap in the lead when he was in the lead. I do not know how I, how I actually caught him. I think Pedro was starting to preserve his tires to make it to the end because he was pushing extremely hard in the beginning of the race. Um, so I can understand why I caught him, but actually, I think he deserved this win more than me. But all's well that ends well and i've had my first ever perfect floor well not flawless but perfect drama filled f2 weekend pole position in qualifying of the full 25 points in the um the, the feature race and the full 15 in the sprint the only thing that would have made this better is if i had the fastest lap which armstrong and robert schwartzman took from me um but still i still walk away with 44 points almost a double of the nearest driver close to me we now lead the championship with 78 points from Arte Markelov in P2 with 57. Marcus Armstrong actually jumps Robert Schwartzman. He is now in P3 with 42. And Schwartzman is in P4 with 39. But guys, there is still... 13 rounds to go and you guys can actually now see which race is next i actually spoiled that um so i'm gonna make sure that the next time i do not bring up the screen but the next next race is at yes island for the abu dhabi f2 weekend that is going to be phenomenal a track which i'm not good at guys remember i'm running 110 ai I think the next weekend I really struggle around Yas Marina in F1 cars. Nevertheless, in F2, I think I'm really going to have a tough weekend there. And guys, because all these cars are exactly the same, you can go from a weekend like this where I won everything, qualified on pole, won both races, to a weekend where I can actually be fighting over P20. Like, seriously. So, don't think just because I've had a phenomenal weekend now that the rest of the season is just going to be dominance upon dominance upon dominance. Don't even think that. Not happening. Okay, but guys, that has been this race. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying to the end. If you guys did watch yesterday's episode, I want to say thank you. And if you enjoyed this one, I want to say thank you as well. Don't forget to drop a like on not just this video, but if you forgot to drop a like on yesterday's video, go drop a like down below right there as well. It's been fantastic. Pedro PK, driver of the day. Like seriously, that kid has got a bright future. If he drives like this in real life, he's got a bright future because he gave me the race of my life. Guys, make sure to go check out the links in the description down below. Um, if you want to give me a shout out, for instance, this video or my channel, make sure to tag me in the post or the story when you give me a shout out and I will give you a shout out in a future video. For this video, guys, I want to give a shout out to ATUK Gaming. I will put a link to his channel in the description down below. He gave me a shout out recently on Instagram and um, I highly appreciate it. I already gave him his shout out on my Instagram and now I'm going to give his YouTube channel a shout out. Very good YouTube friend of mine and he's also a grinder like myself. Myself, go show him some support um he's really a nice guy and guys finally if you haven't done it yet and you watch till the end and you witnessed this phenomenal race what are you doing hit the subscribe down below don't forget to ding the bell to never miss a future episode if you are not yet subscribed ding that bell because it's just gonna get crazier it was fantastic you guys are amazing i love you and i'll see y'all next time thank you for watching cheers